welcome to my channel. My name is Angela and this is Devon Thread Tales. Thank you so much for joining me today. Today I'm going to be sharing with you all of my recent makes. Now, a little while ago, I did a plans video, not a plan of things that I was going to make, but a plan of how I was going to be doing my YouTube channel. So I was going to be doing Friday sews and I was going to do makes videos and plans videos, etc, etc. And whilst I have tried to stick to that as best as I possibly can. One of the things that I did say I was going to do was I was going to start doing makes videos, but only once I had made four items. And it seems now like it's been a very long time since I've actually done a makes video, but <laughs> I have now got the items that I want to share with you. I am actually sharing with you slightly more than four, but that's because a couple of the items I've almost sneak peeked shown you in previous videos, like my one week me maids and things like that. So I'm kind of going to involve them because I've never talked about them properly, but I won't go on about them because I know you've seen them before. So I hope that's OK. So before I crack on and show you what I've been making, one of the things I wanted to say to you was that I am so, so grateful and so appreciative to everybody that has been following me on my Vlogmas um, throughout the month of December. I think I pretty much did a video every day. I think there were one or two days where I skipped a day or two. Um, but on the whole, I did um, a, a video and an opening of an advent calendar of some capacity, whether it's Beyond the Pink Door or from my very lovely friend Karen, um, who was so little time. We did an exchange of advent calendars. And um, yeah, I, I really enjoyed doing it. It was lovely. I was worried it was going to be hard work. To some extent it was because throughout December hadn't been very well, but um, only coughs and colds, you know, nothing serious, but obviously that just makes you feel a bit drained, doesn't it? Um, but honestly, the response and the just the pure loveliness from everybody that interacted with me whilst I was doing those videos was just absolutely lovely. So this is a great big thank you from the very bottom of my heart to say I really appreciate you all. Thank you so much to any of the new subscribers that subscribed over the Vlogmas. Thank you to everybody that has been with me from the word dot. I really do appreciate it and you do mean a huge amount to me. So thank you very, very much. So I thought I would share with you first of all what I'm wearing. This isn't a recent make. I'm pretty sure I have shared this on a video previously with you, so I won't go into too much detail. But I have got on a Tammy handmade Mila jumper that I made when um, I was inspired by the lovely Ruan, for, who was the Yorkshire Sew Girl. She had made a version of this and I really liked it. I can't tell you about sizing and things like that because I, I haven't looked at my patterns to double check to see what it is, but I do know that I size down at least one, if not two sizes. It's a bat winged type um, garment and I've got mine just tucked in at the front and then loose at the back here. And it's a really lovely, super, super soft fabric that I got. Um, I got it from... I, uh, a remnant sale from Higgs and Higgs and I picked up one piece and I was like oh that's really nice but it just wasn't enough and then I saw in the remnant bin they had another um bit of it so I knew between the two I would be able to get a garment out and I will say I only just got the garment out of it because I, I think there was something like 60 centimeters of one and 50 centimeters of another one or something like that so there wasn't a huge amount but it's super super soft it's really warm I don't wear this very often and the reason I don't wear it all that often is I'm, I'm not sure about the size and the shape of it on me, but I just fancied wearing it today. But I actually quite like wearing it with just something like that around the neck. I think I just feel like I need something there. It feels a bit, it doesn't feel quite right around the neck. Anyway, I digress. I wasn't going to share that one with you, was I? <laughs> so the first pattern that I want to share with you, I'm not going to go into huge amounts of detail of because I've got a sew along for this coming out and I will be sharing that with you next week. So I hope that you will enjoy that. It's a very long video because it's quite, it, it's involved in as much as I wanted to give you lots of detail. The actual construction of this garment is really, really simple. And I desperately wanted to share it with you because I wanted to share putting together a man's shirt pattern. So I've made John the M 
6044, which is a McCall's pattern. It's such a simple, easy man's shirt and a really good start into shirt making if you haven't ever made a shirt before. I really like it. Um, John really likes it. He likes the fit on it. I've made it for him short sleeved, long sleeved. I've made it out of a quilting cotton, a shirting cotton. You know, it's, it's quite a versatile shirt. I've seen lots of other versions of this in really very traditional looking shirt fabric like this checkered one here. I've seen lots of people make it out of very vibrant, bright, almost sort of Hawaiian type vibe shirts as well. And it's just a great pattern to make and you can make it with pretty much any fabric in terms of colouring and pattern, etc, etc. It comes with a few options. It comes with um, short sleeves and long sleeved. You can do it so that it has this back yoke on it and also front yokes. Or Obviously, you could choose just to do the back yoke and not the front yokes. It comes with a simple pocket or it comes with a pocket that has an extra sort of flap coming over the top of it. And I just really like it. And I made this for John oh, a long, long time ago now. I actually made him a few Christmas versions um, of this as well. But I made it for him a long time ago. And um, I always thought, oh, once I'd made that, I would then venture into doing another shirt that's you know maybe more complicated or something like that. But I never have. I've just followed this shirt pattern lots and lots. So um, I've put some pictures in here of John wearing this. But in addition to that, do keep an eye out because, like I say, there will be a video coming out next week um, of the sew along of um, every aspect from start to finish of making this shirt. So I hope that's something that you'll enjoy. So like I say, not going into huge amounts of detail about that because there will be a new video coming out soon. So the next garment that I want to talk to you about is again one that you've seen but I haven't gone into very much detail about so I won't go into huge amounts of detail on it right now but I will at least cover some of the things that I haven't talked about before. So I wanted to make the Sew Over at Nomi dress, again inspired by Ruan from the Yorkshire Sew Girl. I wasn't sure that this was a dress that I wanted to make, but we went away for a weekend with the Northern Soul Sisters quite some time ago. And Ruan was making, uh, was wearing a really gorgeous um, grey, I want to say it was leopard print, but it wasn't true leopard print. It had different patterns over it, but grey, black kind of version of this dress. And I just, you know, when you just see something and see somebody wearing something, you go, I, I love that. That looks absolutely fab. And she looked fantastic in it. And I decided I wanted to make it. And I just then haven't got around to making it. And quite some time ago, I got a Guthrie Garni kit. It was a kit to make the cashmere, cashmere Appleton wrap dress. Oh, that's quite a mouthful to say that. Um, but the cashmere Appleton wrap dress. And it was in this beautiful, oh, quite similar to my scarf actually this beautiful beautiful color green now I don't know what you how you would describe that maybe a jade or something like that to excuse it it's not ironed but I will be putting pictures in of this on so you'll be able to see it properly but I really loved this color and I decided I didn't want to make the dress that I got in the kit until I'd made a mock version of it when I made the mock version of it I didn't like it and then I didn't want to make this up in this fabric but I realised I had plenty of it to be able to make the Nomi dress. So I thought, oh, do you know what? I'm just going to go for it. So I um, did a little bit of research, looked at what my measurements should be in this dress. And pretty much I am a standard size 12 in most sew over it patterns. And the only thing that I was concerned about with this is be it was that it was jersey and I didn't know whether or not I wanted it to have slightly tighter fit and because I, I wanted it to look quite sort of slinky. Um, and this fabric, it's a modal fabric or a bamboo fabric. I'm not quite sure what it is, but it is a beautiful feeling fabric. It is really soft. It's really drapey. And it just, yeah, it just has this really gorgeous feel to it. And I wasn't sure about this once I'd made it up, but I've worn it a few times now. And a few people said to me on the first video, because I did it, I wore it in a one week me made video that I had done before. And a couple of people said to me, yeah, it's not really your style. But it's weird, the day that I videoed this, I videoed it in the morning, I was away with Helen, who's Stitch Rip Repeat, and we were at the, was it the Knitting and Stitching show? 
I can't think what it was that we were at. I think it was the Knitting and Stitching show. And I decided to wear this, I think, for our journey home. And I recorded myself in the in the hotel in the morning, sort of saying, this is what I've got on. I'm not sure about it and all the rest of it. But you know what? For the rest of the day, I felt great in it. I felt really nice. I just loved the fact that it was long. It felt, it just felt really nice. It felt elegant. It felt very comfortable, obviously, because it's jersey. And I did make it in the size 12, which is what my size should be. So I'm sort of between a 36 and 37 bust, between a 30, 31 waist and around about a 38, 39 hip. Now, I'm, I know I'm saying in between sizes, but that's because I seem to keep varying every time I measure myself. So I'm just going with that for the moment. <laughs> um, and I did really like it. A couple of people suggested putting a belt with it. I haven't found a belt that I like, but over the Christmas, I bought myself a elasticated belt in black for a different outfit, which I'm going to show you in a minute. And I really like that. And I'm wondering whether getting something similar to that and wearing it in brown with this would look nice as well. But I am so pleased with this and I need to wear it more. I do think it would make a difference to how this looked if I made it in a patterned fabric as opposed to a plain fabric as well. Um, but I love it. I really, really love it. Um, I think what I could do is something similar to this is where something like a little snood or Karen from So Little Time has made these little um, infinity scarves that she wears in pattern fabric and that always looks really nice and I think against the plain something like that would look quite nice just in this type of weather obviously in the in the warmer months then you wouldn't i don't think i'd wear this in the height of summer but certainly in the spring this would be lovely so the only adjustments that i made to this was i lengthened the waist it takes off the hanger i lengthened the waist a little bit because most sew over patterns come up a bit short on me and then once i had lengthened it and put it together i realized it was actually too long and i don't know whether that was just the the type of fabric it is and the weight of all the fabric was pulling the waist down it actually then sat below my waist so I took it up again just by another centimetre or something like that and I think ideally I need to go over it again and just just reduce it again by say another centimetre and that will be absolutely perfect it's okay but it's not it's not quite right and I think when I've got it on it makes my body look slightly too long and I think it's just it's just out by a bit so I probably will when I have some time and I've threaded up my overlocker with some of this green thread I will go over it again now I know you've probably heard me talk before about gathers and the fact that I don't like lots of gathers around my tummy and obviously this has got gathers but look look how light those gathers are let me show you up close it's not like I have loads and loads and loads of fabric sort of all gathered and sort of bumping out over my tummy and it just that just felt really right for me so yeah so all in all a really lovely make very very comfortable one I would like to make again but one I would like to make in potentially a patterned fabric too Hi, so I thought I would just slice in here um, a little segment to share with you the sponsors of this video and that is Serious Readers. Now Serious Readers got in contact with me quite some time ago, I want to say around about 12 months ago, maybe a little bit longer than that, and asked if I'd like to work alongside them in respect of their lights and I'm so delighted that they did. The lights have been a bit of a game changer when it comes to my sewing. They use something called Daylight Wavelength Technology always find that really hard to say. <laughs> I have to really enunciate when I say it. Um, but they use this daylight wavelength technology, which is unlike any other lighting and that it really replicates natural daylight. Now, I'm sat in what is my sewing room slash my daughter's bedroom when she's home from uni. And I have got on a ceiling light, which is not particularly bright, but you can see on this cupboard here, you can see sort of the, the glow of the light there. It's actually still daylight today, but it is such a dull, horrible, dark day. You can't really tell that it's daytime. Um, so I've got the window right beside me open and shining in. And I've got my lights here, which I haven't switched on yet. Now I've got the um, floor lamp, which is a, and it's a Gemini one. So it's got two heads to it. So I'm going to turn these on. Okay. Now, I don't think that videoing this really shows you the 
quality and the brilliance of these lights because it's really difficult to pick up on camera. But what I will do, I'm going to turn one of these heads and shine it towards this white of this cupboard because you can see the difference it makes. Now it looks really, really bright. That I'm kind of squinting because it's right in my eye. I wouldn't obviously have it right in my eye normally, but it makes such a difference. And can you see the light is just this really good natural white light. It's not it's not glaring. It's not a, a glaring yellow light. It's not fluorescent or anything like that. It's absolutely brilliant. And they have different elements to them. So the Gemini light, which is what I've got at the moment, has these flexible um stands on them so that you can bend them in any which way that you want and they are very very sturdy and they stay in place but once you've um, then bend them back again they they go back into shape really nicely they then have i'm going to turn this light off so i don't shine this right at you they have these um handles oh just turned it on again they have these handles so you can turn them i think they've got a 360 degree swivel on them or if they haven't it's very very close to 360 degrees um once you turn them on there this section here you can um sort of narrow the light or widen the light so you can have it as intense or as broad as you like and also there is a dial on the back of the light here which can dim down the light and take it up nice and bright. I think you can just see that in the head of the light there and then on, obviously an on off switch as well. I just absolutely love them and the difference that it's made to my sewing during the winter months and during um, night time as well has been absolutely brilliant but like I have said in previous um, times when I've been talking about these lights I'd be lying if I said that they don't help me throughout the rest of the year. There are times when I'm working on dark um, projects, you know, black garments and using black thread against black fabric and just having that light and being able to bring that down like that and just sort of work right up close with the light shining right down on it, especially, you know, as we get older, our eyes do change and I do struggle sometimes. Having that just makes such a difference. So they don't just help me direct throughout the winter, they do help me um, all the year round. <laughs> Um, so I have got a fabulous discount code for you. I have got £100 off and free delivery um, and I'm going to put that code across the screen and I'm also going to put the code and all of the details in the description below. So thank you again to Serious Readers for sponsoring this video. Okay so on to the next item and the next item that I have to share with you is a really strange relationship with this garment actually not the one that I've made but just in this pattern in general so I, I do find that this sometimes happens and I'm sure other people get this where you see something and you think oh that's nice but it's not really for me it's not it's not really what I would wear or it's not really what I would like um, and the pattern that I'm talking about is the paper theory Zadie jumpsuit now I really like it. I've seen so many people with wonderful versions of this, but it's just one of those things where I've kind of gone, yeah, I don't, I don't know. I don't know if it's for me. Um, I, I wasn't keen on the oversizedness of it. And then I saw other people make it and they'd sized down and fitted it a bit more. And I was like, yeah, I just don't know. Anyway, I then was asked if I would teach how to sew it. And I thought, well, I'll better blim and make it then, aren't I? <laughs> So I got some very inexpensive um, chambray fabric and I made it up and I think I made it in a straight size 10 and it was fine. It was it was OK. And I actually liked it way more than I was expecting. Then I did some adjustments to the pattern and I made it in a viscose fabric and I extended the legs and made it long. And I really like that version. And I've now made my third version. So I've gone from not sure I like it, not sure I'd ever wear it, to having three versions of the thing. <laughs> and actually, I think I can see myself making many more as well. So go figure, hey ho. So before I show you the actual garment itself, which I will put again, pictures in and video and all the rest of it of me wearing it, but I will just show the adjustments that I've made. I've got the pattern pieces here. So this is the paper pattern that I've got. So I've done it in a size 10 across here, which I think 
I want to say my measurements put me in a size 12, if not even a size 14, but it was so oversized, I decided to size down quite a bit, but I did make a twirl of this because uh, I'd made a twirl of the size 10 when I made the original version because I thought, oh, I don't want to, I don't waste my fabric and sizing down a couple of sizes is quite a bit, isn't it? So I twirled this and I made the size 10. So it's a size 10 across the top of the shoulders and the neckline down here. And then I, have from this armpit here down to the waistline, I've brought it down to the size eight and I have, what have I done on this side? And I've just done the centre back, I've just done the size eight all the way down. And obviously I would have done something very similar on the front, but the, this um, is a very, the front is a very different shape, but I've definitely sized from a 10 to an eight on that. Then on the trouser section, so I've got the, back leg section here I have gone from the size 8 so that joins up to the waist of the bodice correctly I've done the size 8 and I've done that all the way down but here can you see where this sellotape is I've actually reduced that by four centimeters so I've cut a straight line right the way across brought this up and then sort of blended that in so it goes well together there and there and that is four centimetres that I've reduced it by because I found the crotch was just hanging a little bit too low and didn't feel quite as comfortable as I would have liked. And then to extend it, I've just added quite a bit of length on the bottom. Now, unfortunately, I haven't written how much that is on there, but I think that's about 15 centimetres, just, just as a rough guess how much I've extended it. Now, when I say I've extended it, actually, the size eight is up here. So look, I haven't cut off any of the other sizes on the bottom so that's probably about 20 centimeters actually that I've extended that by from the original size which is up here so just to give you a bit of an idea of how I've adjusted my pattern I hope that helps but obviously if you want any more help with that please do let me know so I bought this fabric a long long time ago with the Zadie jumpsuit in mind after I'd made my other ones and just never got around to doing it then didn't teach it for for quite some time and over this last couple of months I've I've taught the Zadie jumpsuit and one of the ladies there had a fabric very similar to the one that I've got which made me go oh yeah I need to get that out and, and make it and because I had taught it sort of two days on the trot I got my fabric washed and dried and ironed cut it out and I just I made it up really really quickly it's actually not that difficult to make the pr probably the hardest bit of this is getting the bias binding done around the neck but you don't have to do it in the way that the pattern instructions tell you. You can do it in different ways to make it easier for yourself. But it's come together really nicely. Now, I've only worn it once. I wore it um, to one of my jobs that I had <laughs> a little while ago, um, to the nursery school that I was working in. And I just felt really nice in it. I did wear it with a cardigan. I think this would look quite nice with a long sleeved top underneath it maybe in white i have got a roll neck white jumper which or it's not a jumper it's a thin roll neck sort of jersey top and i did think about wearing that under it but i i don't know if that would look a bit strange so i'm thinking sort of a low scooped neck white top but with long white sleeves might look quite nice but i'm really pleased with how it came out i did the long leg version of this i actually extended the ties by a little bit just to make them particularly long so that it made it easier for tying around and i have to say when i wore this i had so many compliments and so many people say to me oh my gosh i i really like your jumpsuit isn't that lovely i haven't worn it again since i think because of the whole long sleeve thing and being chilly i need to figure out quite how I'm going to wear it. It was obviously a warmer day when I wore it, um, but I absolutely love it. And I think I'm gonna get loads of use out of this in the spring and in the autumn. Um, I just think it's absolutely perfect. And if I can pair up the correct style of t-shirt underneath it, I might then be able to wear it in the winter as well. But I absolutely love it. I'm really pleased with how it came out and I do think it looks really smart. I think I wore it with my Doc Martens, like my big thick Doc Martin boots. And because the legs, are so wide you can get away with wearing boots underneath and um, they don't sort of interfere with the fall of the trouser so it's quite nice oh and I did put that in there look show you that I did put in one of my oh can you see that labels that says oh I can't say see what it says it's, it said made with love I think that's what it says it's blue on one side 
and pink on the other. So I just did the blue side to go with the blue. But yes, really like that. And I think that is a little rosy cheeks label. There we go. <laughs> okay, so on to the next make. And um, this is, I took the inspiration for this dress from the lovely Lucy, who is from So Essential. And um, she has a YouTube channel, she owns a shop, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, um, Instagram. And she made a version of this dress in, I want to say it was like a pink and black, and when I say pink, it was like a baby pink and black, um, oh, like leopard print type type fabric in a crepe fabric and it just looked absolutely lovely. Now the dress doesn't look like anything like I'm going to show you the pattern. <laughs> so it's the Vogue V9344, there we go, and what she did is she took this bodice pattern because she said it fitted really beautifully and really perfectly and she made that with just the short sleeve. So you see where this comes down and then joins onto like a, a gathered poofy kind of sleeve. She made it and just brought the sleeves down to there. And then she created tiers for the skirt. So I was very kindly gifted some fabric from Minerva in exchange for blog post, which is up on Minerva now, if you'd like to go and view it. And I'll put the link into that down below as well. Um, I was gifted this fabric, which is a Minerva exclusive fabric. It is a um, just a viscose. It is absolutely beautiful. It's a really lovely colour. Um, again, it's on the hanger. I'm going to show you pictures as opposed to um, taking this out and putting it on to show you. And I'm really pleased, first of all, fabric wise, just to say it washes beautifully. It holds its shape. It's a really good quality viscose and I'm very, very pleased with it. So on to the actual construction of this. I made the I made the actual bodice of this and I did do a few alterations so I made it slightly smaller across the, sh the shoulders and then brought it out to the correct bust size across my bust etc and I will tell you what the sizes are. So I made the size 14 but I did do the size 12 across the shoulders and just where the arm side comes down I just came out to the size 14 and that's because I seem to be slightly narrower across the shoulders than I am for the size when say if I'm you know I'm 14 across the bust but the 14 at on the shoulders always seems to be a little bit too big so that's why I did that. I think it kind of worked out okay. I'm not 100% sure when I've got it on I sometimes feel like oh is it is it a little bit tight across the back I'm not quite sure but I don't think I could have gone very much bigger. In actual fact even where it sits on the shoulder doing the size 12 I feel like it's slightly too big but then maybe not quite big enough here so I maybe a little bit of adjustment that needs to be done there. But I went on and I did the tiers based on a ready to wear dress that I had and I basically took the measurements so that again I didn't have hundreds and hundreds of bulk of gathering of fabric because I didn't really like the idea of that. Um, so it is it is gathered, I don't know if you can be able to see. So this bit here is the is the bodice and it's flat and this is the this is the gathered tier, the first gathered tier, and it's so slight, it's so, so slight, but just enough to create more volume. And then I come down and I've got another tier, so that's one, two, and then another tier, and another tier. So I've got four tiers, but each one only came out ever so slightly, ever so slightly, ever so slightly. So, so as to not create this huge voluminous kind of look, but I'm really pleased with how it's come out. I will say it's not my best sewing. I love things to be beautifully neat, really tidy, like the inside to be neat, etc, etc. But I really had a mishap with the zip on the back. And I'm going to show you because it's very easy to just kind of go, oh, yes, I do everything. It's all lovely and it's all perfect. But look at that wonky back. Oh, it's even a bit fab thingy sticking out there. So I have not got that zip right at all, have I? Look how far up that side is compared to that one but I just wanted to show you and I've had to unpick it and there's bits fraying on it oh it's just it's not good it's not good at all but I did my best I've kind of fixed a bit of a bad job if that makes any sense I don't even know why or how that happened but it did and um it's fine because I know another time I will make sure I do it correctly I think part of the reason was it was meant to have a facing and I decided to do bias binding rather than a facing. And I think I messed up because I wasn't totally au fait with how to do the, do the bias binding. But it's fine. 
I just make sure I wear my hair down when I wear this dress. Now I have got some pictures which I will have been putting in on the screen for you to see. And I did have a little bit of fun making a reel over on Instagram, which I'm not sure if I will have posted it yet, but I will put that up as well, just of dressing this item of clothing up um, in different ways for you know wearing it in the summer, wearing it in slightly cooler months as well. So that was my Vogue dress. For anybody that would have followed me over the Vlogmas, you will have already seen this. So I do apologise in advance that you have seen this, but I'm going to share with you more specific details of how I put this together. So I saw a, an Instagram story with somebody who had bought some clothes and they had bought a pair of um, velvet trousers and a velvet top. And I just fell in love with this vision of style that she had and I thought it would make a really great Christmassy going out kind of outfit and I wanted to replicate it and in my head I thought I, I don't want to buy any more patterns I didn't mind buying the fabric but I didn't want to buy any more patterns so I had to think about what patterns I had and I remembered I had this one here which I will have put an image up already of the, the my inspiration and you'll probably think well, that doesn't really look anything like it, which in some ways you're absolutely right, it doesn't. But I decided that I could get the top here on this dress and I could put it together with these trousers and I could somehow or another get it to sort of work. And what I wanted to do was I wanted to make a pair of trousers which weren't gathered. So this is a this is actually a dress and a jumpsuit. And this is then all gathered together with elastic. And I didn't want that. I didn't want all that ruching. So I'm going to try really, really well to explain this. But it's quite difficult. So hopefully it'll come across okay. So basically what I did is I took the trouser pattern as I had had it previously. And I, I mean it... it this poor piece of tissue because I, I didn't I didn't trace it I just cut it straight out which was really naughty basically I took the trouser piece and I, what size did I do I did oh I, I don't think actually in the end I don't think it mattered what size I did I just wanted that basic trou trouser shape so I had something to follow because I ended up bringing the legs out so that they were really straight because on this pattern on the picture they actually come in sort of a bit narrower and I wanted them to be straight so what I did is I laid the pattern out on my fabric and I measured how wide my waist was and I and I folded over the pattern pieces until they were a quarter of my waist size does that make sense I think that makes sense and I made sure that the hips came in from right across this line that they then fell on the size of my hips because I was using a stretch fabric so I knew it wasn't going to interfere too much with you know it wasn't going to cause any problems I didn't want them to look like leggings so I didn't want them overly tight so I did obviously make a little bit of seam allowance as well um, but I just did them so that they sat just on my hips and then fell nice and straight so that very very straight legs and then what I did is I so in fact let me show you I've got the the outfit here so what I did is I then I think I just tacked the um elastic like really wide elastic I tacked it to the right side of the fabric um because I thought I was then going to flip it down I tried that on and it was it was too big the elastic fitted but around the waist and around the hips it still was a bit too big so I literally went over again by a centimeter and took off with my overlocker I just literally whipped down each side so essentially that was taking off four whole centimeters didn't mess with the with the center seam on the front or the back or the crotch or anything like that I just literally went down a centimeter each side which obviously is two centimeters that side two centimeters because it's two pieces of fabric so four centimeters all together and then attached the elastic again and that worked out really well and what I then thought I was going to do is I thought I was then going to flip that elastic over stitch it down in place just sort of on the on the sides and maybe in the center and I would then wear those as a pair of um, velvet trousers with my velvet top 
but actually when I wore them, when I put them on, because I put a belt over the top of all of it, I actually felt more comfortable with that waist being up like that, strangely. So um, probably haven't quite got the depth of this correct, um, which is why that didn't feel comfortable it being down. But because I had a belt on over the top of it, it didn't matter. And I think if I didn't wear a belt, it would have been fine, other than the fact I've stuck a label on it, which I would have to possibly cut off and like sew down the other way. Um, but I could probably wear that with the elastic showing because I think that would look perfectly fine. And I will show you the, the label. It says, me, uh, wear me. And um, my lovely friend, Karen, got me these labels in one of my advent calendars. So they were absolutely lovely and went really well with these. So that was the trouser section using the pattern Simplicity 1355, which can be made in jersey or in woven fabric. And then I took this style of top here and I lengthened it by a couple of inches and I also extended it out a little bit and I made this. Now I've only worn this once. So, oh, sorry, changes again to the pattern. I think I made the size 14, um, but where the where the armpits come, like I say, I then, instead of coming down and following the pattern down the side, I actually came out a little bit because I wanted this to just slightly billow out over the top of my trousers. So I um, that's the only difference that I made in terms of the size of the pattern as well as the length. And the other thing that I did is I omitted the front centre seam. So I took out the seam allowance and actually cut it on the fold because I didn't want it to be cut on the fold. Now I am going to change this because this tie here, which I've made out of the fabric, the velvet, it doesn't run very well at all. And I'm so sorry because I can't remember your name, but somebody in my comments suggested, why not just get some black ribbon and have black ribbon in there? And I was like, genius. That's, that's actually the most perfect idea. And it's such a simple fix. It doesn't even involve any sewing, which is even better. Not, not to say I don't like sewing. Obviously, I love sewing. <laughs> but I am, when I've got time to go to the shops and get some really nice ribbon, I'm just going to buy some black ribbon and I'm going to pull this out and put this in, put the rib ribbon in instead because it will work so much better with this. But I was so delighted with this on the day. Like I say, it's a stretch velvet. Not that this was clip or anything around my top anyway. Obviously the trousers had more of a fitted effect than the top did. And then I paired that up with this belt that I just, I just bought it off of Amazon. I didn't buy it anywhere special, which was, oops, an elastic belt so really nice and stretchy so I was super comfortable we went the the day that I wore this we were going to a um like a luncheon do um and obviously we we're going to eat lots and lots and I was going to be in it all day and I felt so comfortable and so lovely and I'm absolutely delighted with how it came out I don't think there is anything that I would change other than maybe like I say getting that depth on that trouser right but then saying that, they kind of work well with that elastic up anyway, so I'm just not sure. And the way that I attached the elastic, I did tack it on to begin with, um, but I actually just pinned it together and I just overlocked it without cutting anything off. I just literally overlocked. And I think, like I say, if you were to wear that like that without a belt over the top, I think that works quite well anyway. So, yeah, so absolutely delighted with this garment and this outfit and I'm liking the idea of maybe getting myself or making myself some sort of slinky nice top that I could wear with just the velvet trousers as well because I think that would look nice and I will tell you it's quite funny when I was making it I said to my husband oh, I'm gonna make this velvet trouser jumpsuit thing because um, at first I thought I was gonna make a full jumpsuit and then I realized that should be nicer to have trousers on top and when I first said to him about it he went Velvet trousers. Ooh, really? I'm really not sure about that, Andrew. So well, you do what you want to do, you know, whatever. And um, I made it up, and we went out for the day that we were going out. And and he said to me in the morning, "Oh, you look really nice." But then later on the day, he just said to me, "Do you know it really works? It really looks nice." And you've totally proved me wrong. It was absolutely lovely. <laughs> so I was like, "Yeah, yeah, I did actually. Yeah." <laughs> On to the last thing that I've made and 
it's not the last thing that I've made in terms of time frame, just the last item I have to show you. And I've left this till last because it is the thing that I am most proud of. I, I've really, I've really been enjoying my sewing. A little while ago, I had a bit of a sewing slump and I had a bit of a, not a meltdown, but just this, this time of, period of time where every time I sewed something it seemed to go wrong or it didn't fit right or or I made it and it fitted okay but I just didn't really like it or anything like that and you know sometimes you just feel like oh is, what's, what's the point of doing this <laughs> and then I had a bit of a break and I started sewing again and there was something that I particularly wanted to have a go at but because I'd been feeling a bit like oof I wasn't really sure because it was quite an undertaking this this garment um but i kind of just went for it and decided not to make a toile not to sort of make a mock-up version of this which is one of the things that i've had to start sort of doing um i just decided i was going to use some old fabric that i'd had in my stash for quite some time and just get on with it and and sew it and i'm so glad that i did i'm very lucky because it fitted me first time so I will say that and I do know that other people have had problems so bear with me and I will explain so I made the closet call blanker flight suit and oh my gosh I am so in love with this make I cannot express to you enough how much I love it. Now there are a couple of versions it's not a huge amount of variety in the versions so there's a long sleeve version a short sleeve version and there's a version where you can leave the legs totally straight like this or you can put a tag on it and have the the legs so that they taper in at the bottom and I wasn't quite sure what I was going to go for but I knew that I could make up the whole thing and then if I decided to I could unpick the legs and add the tab but I decided to go with the straight legs to begin with and I'm glad that I did that and I've left it at that and actually I've ended up wearing them straight and I've worn them slightly rolled up and I just don't think the tab would work for me but I think it would work for others so bear that in mind I made the short sleeve version I will just go through a couple of the different features that are on this so you have on the back can you see there are these lines now these are pin tucks that go down there there's also which isn't shown on here there's also a little um pleat which allows for room and maneuver there's a pleat on the bottom as well the construction of the pockets are really interesting. They are patch pockets and they actually still, they create part of the belt loop as well, which is really lovely and a really nice sort of feature. And I wasn't sure, one of the reasons I wasn't sure about this, I, I loved it and I wanted to give it a go, but I was a bit like, oh, I don't know if it's really my style. And I feel a little bit out there when I'm wearing it, but oh my gosh, I don't know what it is. I feel a million dollars when I wear this. I absolutely flipping love it. I don't know how much more I can express how much I love this. So here is my version of the Blanca flight suit and I will put videos and pictures in. And very similarly to the Vogue dress, I did actually do a little reel on Instagram where I dressed up in different ways and I will share that on here as well when, when I'm speaking at one point. So short sleeve, but I've just rolled these sleeves up. They're not stitched down, they're just, they're just literally turned over and pressed a couple of times so that I can wear them down if I want to. I think some of the things that I really love about this is things like, I love the fact that this um, Little Rosy Cheeks label, which says, today is a good day um i love the color of that compared to the really gray of the fabric i ran out of fabric when it came to putting the lining in on the well, the facing in should i say on the um, waistband at the back <clears throat> i don't know how i missed it i just i i was squeezing this pattern out of this fabric anyway and when it came to that doing that facing i was like oh no I, and I literally, I couldn't piece together any enough to, to, to make an, a facing, even with a seam in it or anything. So I actually ended up, which is, I think, a happy mistake, really. I ended up making it out of a um, fat quarter, which I don't even know where the fat quarter came from. I think it's one I bought in Hobbycraft a long time ago or a while ago. So I added that, which is like a grey and yellow, which... Nobody else is going to see that, but you know, when you're putting it on, you're just like, oh, it's nice, got a little flash of colour. My um, 
my D rings because there are different options for the belt. You can have the belt so that it is sort of a fixed belt and, and sat. You can have it so it's a tie, but again, I didn't have enough fabric to make it as a tie, which was a bit of a shame. And so I had I had almost like in between enough fabric to make a tie and this loopy type thing, but not enough for one or the other, well, not enough for one or the other. And I didn't think I wanted the shorter version, but I've actually ended up leaving this tie a bit long, which probably isn't right, but I, I quite I quite like how it looks when I'm wearing it. But these D rings, <laughs> I actually I was like, oh I don't know, I don't know what D rings to use. Um, I'll have to buy some and then I was looking through some of my stash and different things that I had and I remember I had these, I'm a bit embarrassed to say this, I had these two dog collars from ages and ages ago which were really good heavy duty dog collars which had my you know my dog's whippets have got quite long claws and they and, they, and they'll go like that and scratch and these collars had really kind of come apart and, and what have you and they needed to throw away and buy a new one. So I, I did that, but instead of just throwing the whole thing away, I cut off these D-rings and something else from them as well. I can't think what it was now. To save to save this little bit, because I just thought, oh you never know, I might make I might make another dog collar for them. Oh no, they're gonna be part of my belt instead. <laughs> so these are actually off a really heavy duty dog collar that I bought a very very long time ago but you know what they work really well and what with us losing Rosie earlier this year which was really awful I quite like the fact that I've got a bit of the dog collar on my, on my jumpsuit but I absolutely love it I don't know what it is about it I don't know whether or not it's the style of it the shape of it just the fact it's something a bit different I it's in denim it's a stretched grey denim which I got, I think, from Haberdashi Fabrics and More, but I can't be 100% sure of it. Um, it's it's a really nice denim. What I will say is, I don't think that it matters that this is a stretch denim. It's meant to be in just a woven. And I think that if I made it again and I didn't make it in a stretch denim, it would be perfectly fine. I don't think I would need to change it. Now, I was meant to, I was meant to try and think about what size I've made and I can't think. I want to say I made a size 10, which is a bust of 36 and a half, which is right where I am. Um, a waist of 29 and a half, so a little bit smaller than me, and hips of 38 and a half. But then when I looked at the finished garment measurements, I kind of felt like it was right. Shall I show you what the finished garment measurements are? They are for a size 10. So yes, the finished garment measurements are 41 point three inches so I thought that was plenty the waist was 34.9 and the hip was 39.9 do you know what I might have even sized down to an eight look what I will do is I will definitely find out what my what uh, what size I made and I'll make sure I put it on the screen because I don't want to misinform you and I, I now can't think I have all of my pattern pieces here and I always always write on the pattern piece what the pattern is, what the piece is, how many I've got to cut out, the grain line, all that kind of thing, and what size. But on every single piece that I've done here, I haven't done the size. Goodness knows why I haven't done that. So I will find that out for you and I'll make sure it's written on the bottom of this screen for you. So I will just show you the features of it. Like I was saying, it's got these pin tucks, which aren't gonna show up particularly well. You can see them actually pin tucks there on the back and then there's these little pleats just to create that little bit of movement and extra room and I don't feel restricted in this at all it feels absolutely brilliant I love what it feels like when it's on now I will just say like I say I've been very lucky and this doesn't happen to me normally so it's not like this happens for me all the time so don't get don't get sort of, oh, it's all right for you. It just works for you because that is not the case in most items that I make. I have to make adjustments. But just for some reason, this has worked for me. But Cara, who is so, so mad, has also made this and she practically made up the entire outfit. And at the end of making it, just before finishing it, she tried it on, which actually, in all fairness, you can't do a lot of it. You can't you can't try it on for size until you have made up a huge amount of it. But she tried it on and it was just too big, too long. And we're actually really similar in height. I'm five foot six and I think she said she's five foot six. But we just have 
must have different body proportions. So I think my body torso must be longer than hers because she said that it was too way too long in the in the um, bodice and she nearly threw the whole thing out she said which I'm so glad she didn't because what she has made it looks absolutely stunning and looks really really lovely so I cannot recommend this pattern enough and even with that bit of difficulty you know to hand as well what I will say is whilst this is a very involved make and it did take me quite some time to make it obviously you are making essentially a top and a bottom and then sewing it together <clears throat> what i will say is that it is actually so well explained in the instructions the instruction manual that comes which i've just hidden somewhere um, the instruction manual that comes with it is very very detailed it's absolutely great it holds your hand the entire way through there's nothing in there where you're you're thinking, oh, how, how did that go together? And what does, you know, how do I do that? It is just beautifully, beautifully explained. It's absolutely fantastic. And I cannot recommend it enough. Am I gushing about this enough? I think I am. Right, guys, I think I will leave it there. And obviously, I'm going to be coming back to you again with another video. I'm going to be doing my Sew Along for the Man shirt. So please keep your eyes open for that. If you fancy having a watch of that, that'd be great. Um, I will be going back to doing my Friday sews once the whole of the Christmas period is over. And we're well and truly back into 2024. Um, not back into 24 well and truly into 2024 <laughs> um so we will we will get going with that or i will get going with that we who's we <laughs> i think i need to stop that <laughs> i'm so sorry um and um and i'll also be going back to doing my one week me maze which i love doing and you guys always say that you really enjoy too so i will get back to doing that as well but in the meantime i hope everybody's well i hope you have all been having a fantastic christmas Happy New Year to everybody. Have a wonderful celebration, whatever you're doing, and I'll see you next year. <laughs>